it just <laughs> I just noticed that it said we weren't scheduled to go live until 11 p.m. I'm sure that was a mistake when we scheduled this. So if some of you are surprised I'm here now instead of 11 p.m., that was a mistake on our end. But um, we are cracking up because I was like trying to adjust my leggings that I'm wearing. They're hot. They're like compression leggings. So they come up to here. And I was pulling them up and doing this number. And then I realized it was all on the time lapse. And uh, Aaliyah's like, that would make a great outtake. Like, I need a blooper reel. <laughs> so how are you guys? Are y'all having a great day? Um, we are not doing the, the countdown lately. So let me know if you like it that we're not doing it or if you prefer the countdown. I know some of you guys like the countdown because it allows you to, to you know, get in here and find time to find me and all of that. But let me know your thoughts on that if you um, are enjoying not having the countdown beforehand. Um, today, we're going to be painting a cute little flamingo. This is not your ordinary flamingo. It's a like pool float flamingo. And so that's why she's got a really nice rounded body here is she is a float. And so instead of painting this door hanger to size, I'm doing it in a smaller size today, which is 12 inches because I need a summer attachment for my porch leaner. And so I thought this would be a great one to go on my porch leaner. Leanne says she likes the countdown. Okay, we will probably start doing that again before too long, but we had to stop doing it because we wanted to, long story short, short turn some of our Facebook videos into ads and you can't remove the countdown anymore. Like I used to be able to trim it off the front, now I can't. And so for just a little while, we're going to stop using it, but we will bring it back. I promise. Hey, Nanette, you like it too? Okay, good. Thanks for letting me know. Hello, Cindy. Hello, Lisa, watching from Arkansas. She actually prefers no countdown. Um, Diana likes the countdown, or maybe she's thinking about it. I can't see what that emoji is. I need stronger glasses. <laughs> Hello, Charlotte. Thank you. Jenny likes the countdown. Awesome. Tell me where you're watching from. I'm in T Kentucky. Um, Pam said, I forgot it's Tuesday. You know why? Because yesterday was a holiday and, and today does not feel like a Tuesday. It feels like a Monday. It's throwing everybody off. And so it feels really strange to get back to work after being like yesterday felt like a Saturday. So um, hello, Debbie from Ohio and Tina. Brenda says, I don't think you need the countdown if you get the text notification. That's a great point. So if you did not get a text letting you know that we were going live, text the number on the screen and you'll get a notification letting you know I'm going live. And then we wouldn't, you wouldn't need to watch for the countdown. Uh, Annette's watching from Jacksonville, Florida. I hope the weather's nice there. Christy says the audio's out of sync. Um, I don't know why that would be. <laughs> Do you have any idea what? Is it connected? Could be causing that. I wonder. I could. I could make this one leave. Okay. Now you can hear me. Um, the audio usually comes from this overhead camera. So let me. Let me double check. <laughs> Okay. Is that better? Is it fixed now? Uh, Sally says audio is okay in Texas. Okay. Hopefully it's all right. <laughs> um, hello, Laurel, watching from Amarillo, Texas. Charlotte says, I think I like it because I know I'm at the correct spot. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, hello, Miranda, watching from the Ozarks in Missouri. Okay, everybody says it's working fine. So I'm going to go ahead. It's, Pam says it's fixed. Okay, good. So today we're painting this cute little flamingo. We have this design in our shop at shopdoorhangers.com. You can get it as a template, which allows you to cut your own wood, or you can um, purchase the wood blanks from us with the lines laser etched on them. So you don't have to try to draw the beak or the eyes or figure out where any of the lines are. You just get started painting. It makes it so much easier when the design's already on there. So if you want to grab any of that stuff, we put all the links today up in the video description. So all you have to do is click there to grab them. But we are going to start out by base coating our door hanger in uh, white. I was looking at that. Yep, that'll work. <laughs> We're going to start by base coating our door hanger in white because the pink that I have chosen for our flamingo is a really, really bright pink. And I want to make sure that it stays this bright. And I was afraid that the background color of the wood would be too dark. 
So just get a wide flat tip brush and start smoothing out your paint. We're not trying to get it perfect on this first coat. We're just trying to lay it on there. The pink will cover up most of our mistakes if we get, if we don't have it real even. And even though the, the beak's not going to be pink, we're going to go ahead and paint it white because orange also has a tendency to be a little transparent. So painting it white is going to help also. I don't always base coat my door hangers with white paint unless I'm using really bright colors like this with pinks, yellows, reds, things like that, that um, are a little transparent. Painting them white can help. Thank you for sprinkling the love, Connie. I appreciate that. Debbie says, tell me about your shirt. This is one that was from um, my sister-in-law's business, Cotton Chaos. They released it uh, last month, I think. And I think they still have some if you're interested um, at cottonchaos.com. But I actually helped design this shirt, which I'm super proud of it. Um, she sent me a picture. She said, we're kind of trying to do something like this. But she said on the inside of the letters, I want it to look like um, a little bit like Saved by the Bell. So if you're like really close, oh, you can kind of see it in the overhead camera. See how it's got like the geometric shapes and stuff. And it looks a little bit like um, Saved by the Bell design. And so it's also got this sort of like a burnout kind of look to it. Or not burnout. What do you call this? Acid wash? It's got a little bit of an acid wash. So it's got a real 90s feel to it. So I helped her design this shirt. She kind of told me what she wanted and I created it for her. And then she gave me a shirt since I helped design it and I love it. It's one of my favorites in my drawer. It's very unique. Carol's watching from Louisville, not to be confused with Louisville. I thought it was Louisville, <laughs> like Louisville, Kentucky. Where is Louisville? What state is that? I don't know where that one is. And Diana's watching from West Monroe. Are you guys all Texas people? Is that why you're not giving me the state? <laughs> uh, we do have a lot of people from Texas that watch my page. So we're going to try to do an event in Texas maybe next year in 2022. So I'm looking forward to that. All right. We've got it base coated in white. We're going to dry it. North Texas. I, I guess correctly. You're welcome, Rob. Texas is showing up in the comments right now. I do see Tammy from Georgia. Um, I see Louisiana, uh, Newfoundland. Newfoundland. That's Newfoundland. Did Newfoundland. I say it wrong? Newfoundland. 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 <laughs> my, my mouth does not want to say it that way. Uh, North Carolina. Awesome. Pam says, who else is in North Texas besides me? We have lots of Texas folks. Hello, Sherry from Ohio. Ellen says she loves flamingos. Well, I'm glad you're here, Ellen. We're getting ready to paint this flamingo pink. If you want any of the color, uh, if you want the color list, the supply list to the things we're talking about today and a link to watch this video for later, saved in a nice, neat little PDF, you can text the word list to the number on the screen and we will send you a um, PDF in a couple of days, a link to a PDF you can download, you can print it out or you can just save it on your computer. It'll have all the supplies, the actual color names and everything written down and a link to this video so you can go back and watch it when you're ready to paint this project. Now, if you've done that before on a previous Tuesday or whatever, if you've texted us list before, you don't have to do it again. One time and you'll get every list every week. Okay. All right. The colors we're using are electric pink, dragon fruit. What's this one? Cotton candy and... Pumpkin. It's hard to hold all of these. Shan wants to take a picture of me holding them. <laughs> I'm like trying to figure out the most photogenic way to hold four paint bottles and they're going all over the place. You know, I used to be able to do a Facebook Live by myself and they laugh because now it requires all kinds of help. I have to have like an assistant to help me monitor the comments and somebody else to help me take pictures and all of that. So um, it's probably because I'm an overachiever. We're, we'll just admit that. Hello, Macon from Denmark. Welcome. She's a Painters Clubhouse sister. Um, good morning, Anne from Virginia. She's watching from YouTube. Uh, Tammy said, I bought the Magnolia door hanger and I haven't had the chance to paint it yet. Where can I find the video? Tammy um, and anybody else watching, 
Uh, if you have like subscribed to one of our, like our letter challenge and stuff like that, and you don't know where to find it, you can always email us at support. Just take a screenshot right now of that email and you can shoot us an email and we'll give you directions for how to find that. Uh, Susan says she's late to the party. Good morning from soggy Texas. It has been raining. It's starting to rain here in Kentucky. Okay. Electric pink. Look how bright this is. Ooh, it's like glowing. We're just going to paint the entire flamingo except the beak, this color. Oh my word. This color makes me happy. Look how bright it is, especially on the white. Shan is over there going, Ooh, ah, she helped me pick the colors today. She loves, loves this color. I did a good job. She did a very good job. This is so bright and pretty. I think this would, this is probably the actual color that a pool float would be if it was a flamingo pool float. And I think if you'll hear a vacuum in the background, my housekeeper came today. And so she's in there vacuuming while we're filming a Facebook live. Don't know what I'd do without her. My house would be an absolute wreck. I'm sure she only comes every two weeks, but by the, by the last few days before it's time for her to come, I'm usually like, Oh, these floors look awful. I guess I should probably sweep. <laughs> I put it off until I have to. And it's worse when the kids are out in the summertime because they just go right behind me making a big mess of everything that I just cleaned up. So here in just a little bit, I'm going to be showing you guys how um, I would put like the Velcro and stuff on the back of this to turn it into a uh, porch leaner attachment. In case you didn't hear me earlier, um, this is not a door hanger size. This one's only 12 inches. And so I chose to do it smaller because I want to attach it to my welcome porch leaner that's on the front porch. And um, I attach them with Velcro. And so this one is only 12 inches, which is about the size I usually do for my leaner attachments. 12 inches would also work really well for a, um, a wreath attachment. Do any of you guys make wreaths? Hey, Jackie from Myrtle Beach. I think Brooke Riley's at Myrtle Beach right now on vacation. If you know Brooke Riley from Refab, her whole family's down there. By the way, we're going to be choosing somebody for Happy Mail here in just a little bit. So um, let's see. How about you answer in the comments if you have a porch leaner on your porch or not? Do you or do you not? And if you do, what kind do you have? Does yours say welcome? Does it say go away? What does it say? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Look how bright this is. Let me hold it up so you guys can see. It's like neon pink. Love, love, love it. What size brush are you using for that? What size brush? This one was about a one inch wide. And it's actually one of the glitter brushes that I got from uh, Jamie Connor. She has a... Um, what do you call it? Ultimate glitter brush subscription. And so she did leopard print and glitter on this one. And so it's one inches wide and it's a nice flat tip. It's one of my favorites. If you're interested in her brushes, I think we put the links to that up in the comments too. <laughs> Lacey says hers says unwelcome. That's hilarious. Pamela and Ellen have one that say welcome. So does Patricia. Cheryl says, I don't have a porch leaner. Um, we tore down our old porch and haven't rebuilt a new one yet. Well, you'll have to get one when you get that new porch up. Jackie, you want to do one? Well, you totally should. They're not that difficult. Um, really, you could, if you don't want like a heavy duty one, you could just go get, well, it would cost you a lot right now because we know lumber is expensive right now, but you could just go get like, a, what are they, 10 or 12 inches wide, a board that's about one inch thick, 10 or, tw 10 or 12 inches wide. And the length of it would need to be about four to six feet, depending on the size you were wanting. I like mine to be about six foot tall. I like it to be big. But of course, we have like a driveway that's really, really long. So for you to really be able to see it as you're coming up the driveway, it's going to have to be big. All right, here's your okay, our uh, happy meal. <laughs> happy. <laughs> I just said happy meal instead of happy mail. Our happy mail winner is Melissa Gaston, who says, I don't have one on the porch. I have a huge home inside that I switch out the O every holiday. So mine says, welcome, Melissa. And the O on mine gets changed out too. So um, right now, I think I have a tulip out there. And so instead of a tulip, we'll have a flamingo. So send me an email, Melissa, and we and, uh, send me your address and I'll send you some happy mail. Mallory says, mine says, oh, that comment disappeared. Where'd it go? Hang on, I'm going to go up and find it. Y'all were all commenting so fast. Mallory says, 
Uh, mine says home. Right now, the O is a patriotic star for Memorial Day. I bet that is beautiful. So yeah, if you wanted to do a four foot tall one, home would fit on that really nicely. And if you want to do six foot, you could do the word welcome. Thank you for sprinkling the love, Pamela. Anita says, are you hungry? It's possible. I start getting the shakes when I get hungry. Will your flamingo have legs? No, because this flamingo is like a pool float. When we get done painting it, she's going to look like a pool float, like a kid would play on. Um, what is the color on the flamingo? Electric pink. And don't forget, you can text us to get the list of uh, the paint list colors and stuff like that. Um, just text the word list to us and we'll send it to you in a couple days when we have it made up. All right, now we're using... This is a patio paint color, but it is called pumpkin. It's just a nice, light, creamy. Actually, it's a little too light, so let's add a little white to it. I mean, it's a little too dark is what I was trying to say. Obviously, I need to eat. Somebody needs to feed me a snack. Okay. <laughs> and Shan is giggling because she just went and raided the kids' candy basket, and she's over here eating a Ghirardelli chocolate square. There we go. That's a little better. See how much, like, lighter and... That actually looks like it goes with this pull float a little better. I'm watching from a campsite. You're watching from a campsite. Oh, that sounds nice. My kids went camping this weekend with Uncle Corey. Um, and it was beautiful weather for it. I'm glad you have enough service out of the campsite because the campsite that my boys went to didn't hardly have service at all. All right. Um, I'm going to see if I can pick up a little bit of that darker orange and maybe do a little bit of a shade on there so i'm just getting a little bit of that darker or the original orange and adding a little bit of shading to the bottom side do you see that we added a little bit of darker to the bottom of the beak all right we're going to let that dry um diana says i have a porch leaner and since i found you in september i have painted 11 12 inch hangers for the o so you have one for every month nearly that's awesome um, somebody else said, I don't have a leaner yet, but the flamingo is my favorite. My porch is tiny and the rocker takes up most of the room. We have a really large porch. Ours is, I think it's like 20 feet long or something. I don't know. It's really long. It's really large. Uh, okay. Let me make sure this is dry because we're going to do polka dots. Let's choose what size dots to use, shall we? So we have these in our shop. These are sponge pouncers that come in a variety of sizes. Looking here, that's what, four sizes? Is that right? Yep, four sizes. I think you get five of each one. Um, I think probably either this one or this one. I like big dots, so we're gonna go with the big one. And we're going to use the cotton candy pink. So this will be like a really nice pale pink polka dot. I'm actually going to use the lid of an egg carton. Lovely sound this is making. I'm going to use the lid of my egg carton to dip my sponge pouncer in because it's a nice flat surface. And the trick is to cover your entire sponge, but then to scrape most of it off. So once you get it all gooped up on there, I like to take the edge of the egg carton and just scrape almost all of it off. And now we can start doing polka dots and do like a gentle twisting motion when you dab. Got to get it all the way around there though. I didn't really cover that very well. How you feeling about that color? It looks a little muted, doesn't it? Hang on. I don't like this color. We picked it out without really planning it out. So if this happens to you while your paint is still wet, a baby wipe and it's like it never happened I think you're right I think we're gonna take the electric pink and just mute it or not mute it down but lighten it up with a little bit of white because this color so we're gonna change it up on the color list the cotton candy against this electric pink looked too muddy yeah I was like trying to think of the right word it muted wasn't really the right word let me get some white paint so we have our electric pink now instead. Hold on. I just realized what I'm doing now. I was supposed to do it over here on this. So again, another teaching lesson. If this happens to you and you don't want to waste your paint,
scoop it up like a shovel with your brush and just transfer it. <laughs> nah. Okay. And then use a little bit of white. This might have been too much white. We'll have to wait and see. And just kind of mix it around. That's looking much better. So you kind of want to take the original. If you're just wanting to do polka dots in a lighter shade, you kind of want to take the original color and just lighten it. Let me see. Test spot. No, nope, it's not light enough. A little more white. Sometimes you guys learn more from my boo-boos than you do from watching me paint something perfectly. Okay, I think that's light enough. I don't want it to be super, um, like, stand out. Let me get a new sponge pouncer. The reason I'm getting a new one is because I don't want any of that getting into this. And I can't rinse the other one because then my sponge would be damp and it would cause more bubbles. So if you have a problem with bubbles, it could be that your sponge has a little bit of moisture in it or your sponge just period has too much paint on it. Let's hope I've mixed enough paint to do these. There we go, now we're talking. That is the exact color I was going for. Shannon says you got her addicted to painting your hair. Oh, well good. It is a healthy addiction at least, and it can make you some money if you end up selling what you paint, so. Being addicted to door hanger painting is not a bad thing. Should I do them on the head too? I guess so. I kind of feel like she's going to look funny up there if I don't. Let me soak up some more of this paint. Let's see. We may have to get her. Let me get a, uh, not a baby wipe, a sticky note out. And we use my sticky note. Well, hang on. I'm gonna have to modify my sticky note so that it's got a bit of a curved edge. Wait, where's the sticky part? Okay, it's up here. You could also use painter's tape, but I feel like a little bit more. I feel like this is a little easier. There we go. And we'll do a dot right there. And if you're like me and you accidentally get it on the beak, you've still got that baby wipe handy, so just clean it up. There we go. Maybe one more right here. And now we have polka dots. Um, yes, they are the perfect color. Now, this, one, this is like, it's just the right amount of light pink to mimic the background of the light pink, so I like that much better. It's not muddy. Um, what are the color of the dots? It's the electric pink, but they were lightened with white. So you don't even need a second color of pink. You just need white. Hello, Rita from Gainesville. Um, okay, next we're going to start adding our detail lines. Let me see. I want to look over at the example real quick. It was a dark pink, and then we had black and white also. Okay, so the dark pink we chose was dragon fruit. <laughs> Shanna's crossing her fingers, hoping it's the right color. We will see. If it's not, we have a baby wipe, right? But we do need to make sure our dots are completely dry because if we do mess this up and have to wipe it with a baby wipe, it'll mess things up if my dots are wet. I'm laughing at Damon because he sent me a text over the weekend where he was painting candy corns to go on a wreath or something. And he's like, this is stressful. I'm like, it's not supposed to be stressful. <laughs> uh, and then he sent me another picture later and he said, it turned out real streaky. And I'm like, well, you could sand it down. He's like, that's a lot of work. I was like, then just let it go. Just let it be. <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry about it. All right. I'm using a round tip brush. I chose one that's rather thick. See, it's got lots of bristles. You know, the alternative to that would be one that's much skinnier and doesn't have a lot of bristles. So, and I got it a little bit wet because I wanted to thin my pink paint down just a little, just enough so that I can make like a nice line with it without running out of paint. You're going to load your brush up with lots of paint. See how much I got on there? And then we're just going to do um, the outlines of the areas that have like etching on them. 
So like here, it's looking a little dark, isn't it? Shan, Shan winced. I did too. That is, uh, this is the trouble whenever you paint with like neon bright colors is sometimes the colors you use with that color will not look right. So we're going to test another color. Sizzling pink. I think I need some more WD-40 for my chair. Whew, that color almost hurts your eyes. Let's see what this one looks like. This one is an actual neon. Oh, I got to rinse this brush out. Oh, hold on. Getting ahead of myself. Where do you buy round paintbrushes? We actually have an entire set of them in our shop, but you can just get them in a variety pack or something if you like to shop at the craft store. But the ones in our shop come with 12 different sizes. So um, those would be all the ones you ever need, really. All right, my brush is rinsed. Let's pick up this electric paint and see what this looks like. Yeah, yeah. that's where I'm going. Shan didn't think this color would work well. I suggested it. She's like, mm, I don't know. I think it's not going to be right. I'm like, okay, we'll let you pick. <laughs> we have to teach them by letting them make their own mistakes. You got one color right. Yeah, she said she got one color right. It's totally okay. We'll have you painting door hangers for before long. You're just learning through all this. Okay, right now I'm just tracing over those lines that were etched. I also kind of want to go around the edge of the body like this. Maybe do a little bit around the outside. And then let's see up here. I just love this color. I just want to put it all over the place. This is the neon pink. Now, if you were to do this color just by itself, it wouldn't show up this well. Because we are doing it on top of another pink with that has white underneath, it's showing up really well. But um, neons have a tendency to be kind of transparent unless you're painting them on top of another pink. Okay, so look at that. Look how pretty. Looks completely different in the front view than it does in the overhead view, doesn't it? Like the lighting is completely different. Okay, we're going to dry this, and then we're going to add our finishing details, and then I'm going to show you how um, to add the Velcro to the back if you're going to put it on your porch liner. You just tell me what you want to paint and we'll ship it down there before I come down to New Orleans and we'll have a paint party. But I may have you have you go pick up some paints or something because I don't want to have paint bust in my luggage on the way down to New Orleans. <laughs> I'm going to see Damon next week. We're having a mastermind in New Orleans. And so it would be fun if we got to paint together. So, yeah, pick something out. We'll ship it down there um, or I'll cut it with the Glowforge first and then send it. Damon says, I think you are really becoming a, or no, not Damon said that. <laughs> B is saying that about Damon. She thinks he's becoming a DIYer. I think so too. I think he's been bitten by the painting bug. Okay, let's get our pasta pens. Not pasta, pasca. Let's try the skinny one. This is the 3M size. And we're just going to add some little details. really make this come alive. These are little boxes of paint brushes. Oh, awesome. So you're already prepared then. I'm not having to freehand this little eyeball. The, the lines are laser etched on here. I'm just filling it in. And then we're going to take it. I kind of need to make sure all that pink is dry. It's sort of dry. And we're just going to kind of go along the same areas that we went with our electric pink. I'm trying to be quick and whimsical about it. That way it's not perfect. Ooh, that was a little crazy. Hang on. I went up past the neckline. Baby wipes help in this situation too. Damon, do you have any baby wipes? Get some baby wipes. They help out when you paint. Do you say something? Happy mail. Oh, yeah. She's reminding me we need to do happy mail again before we finish this up. So if you guys will leave a comment and let me know know if you have any vacation plans this summer. Are you planning on going anywhere? And we'll choose somebody um, for happy mail. Kim says, I'm only an hour from NOLA. I don't know if we're doing a meetup this year or not. So we used to, but then with COVID, we stopped doing meetups when we were together for uh, Mastermind. So we'll have to ask Damon if we're doing any kind of meetups. Um, 
Yes, Wanda, you should paint one of these for your deck. Sherry's going to the beach. <laughs> Leanne says Porchville so far. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Dollywood is so much fun. I've been there too. All right, so our final details that we're going to add to this are with a white Posca pen. I'm just going to do like a little squiggle and add some whimsy. Because remember, this is a pool float. So we don't want it to look too perfect. We want it to look like it's reflecting the light. And it's just more fun when you're whimsical. If you take it too seriously when you're painting, you won't have nearly as much fun. So that's probably what Damon was doing wrong. Okay, you can't quite see these details in the overhead camera. So let me show you what it looks like up here. So see those little white details? That just kind of brought it to life. Okay, um, on the example, there was a little bit of black inside the polka dots, but I don't want to distract. I like the way it looks right now, so I'm not going to add that detail. Um, but I do want to show you guys how to add the, the Velcro to the back. So you can actually do this with any of our current designs in our shop. All you have to do is print out the template or cut it on your laser machine with uh, at, at 12 inches or so, and that would make a great wreath attachment or a porch leaner attachment. So any of our designs can be made into a smaller version for this purpose. So we're gonna flip it over on the back and we're gonna use, this is industrial Velcro, you guys. I get this um, on Amazon. I have it linked in my favorites. This comes in a five foot roll, two inches wide. So I like the nice wide stuff. And you have to remember, what piece goes on the back of this because right you have to have a fuzzy side and a scratchy side i believe on my sign out there is the fuzzy side so i'm going to cut off a square that's about two inches by two inches of the scratchy stuff and you want the industrial strength just because um it, it it adheres better and it stays attached better and you're just gonna cut it and you're gonna apply lots of pressure to attach it. Now, if you're not sure where to attach this, you know, maybe you've got an odd shape and you're unsure where on the piece to attach it. My tip for you is to peel off the backing and stick. Can you hear the squealing going on? There's two little girls down the hall having the best time. Um, you take your Velcro and you, instead of attaching it to the piece, attach it to the square of Velcro that's already on your sign so that you've got fuzzy and, and coarse touching each other and the adhesive is facing out with nothing on it. Then you would take your wood cut out and touch it to that Velcro and mash really hard until it's adhered. And so that might be helpful if you're having a hard time figuring out where to place this on the back of your wood. So just to make sure you get the perfect placement, attach it to your sign first and then attach. Did that make sense? I feel like that was a really muddy way of explaining it. All right, happy mail winner is Sequoia Lindsay. She said, it's my first time watching you live. I've been watching on YouTube for over a year. Oh, how cool. She said, I love your work. The reason I started doing door hangers and I purchased a Glowforge. High five, Sequoia, that's awesome. Um, I hope you were able to get the $500 off. If you weren't, I'm so sorry. But we do have a $500 off code if you want to get it for um, getting a Glowforge yourself. If you're getting the pro, let's grab one more. Okay. One more happy mail winner, Laurel Shores. Uh, you, you, if you guys will both email us, we will sit at, with our, at your address. We'll send you some happy mail. Laurel says we're getting our RV loaded and ready to head to the Colorado mountains away from people and technology, fishing and grill our trout catches hiking. Long that sounds wonderful. That sounds so relaxing. Okay. Do you guys want to add a clear coat of, of, uh, sparkle to this real quick before we go? Did you hear Shan go? <gasps> <laughs> she loves doing this sort of stuff. This is a fun new varnish that I have. It's called Starlight Varnish. It has glitter in it, but it's a really fine glitter. Fine, fine, fine. Now, it's different from the Galaxy Varnish because the Galaxy Varnish has chunky glitter. So if you like a really fine glitter, a really light application, um, let me see this great little brush right here. Use um, the Starlight Varnish. You can barely see the glitter in it. So the tricky thing is, is we don't want to do back and forth strokes on top of our Posca pens. Remember that because the Posca pens will bleed. So we're going to do it like a one stroke, one direction application. I'm going to try to hold it up here. 
and just try to pull it across. Now I do have a little bit of excess right there. So I'm only going to go one direction back the other way. See what I did? I'm trying not, if I can help it, to brush across the same area more than once. Now I did it twice there, but just do it carefully. Don't go back and forth. Will the industrial type stand up in the sun? Uh, well, I don't know because I have my porch sun on the porch and my porch is covered. I would think that it should, but I can't promise that it will. This is real pretty. It's kind of tricky doing a one stroke application, but y'all see how I'm only going across each section like one time, unless I have a streak somewhere that's kind of odd and I try to just pick that up without touching the Posca lines. can also kind of dab some off. See, I've, there was like a lot on my brush, so I dabbed it off, and now I'm just going to pull that through. In a minute, Charlie's banging on the door. Okay, there's a little too much right there. All right, glitter, glitter, glitter. Let me dry this, and you can see the sparkles. Oh, there's a little spot right there. Okay, this is a very, very light coat of glitter. So if you like this and you want to make it shinier, I would suggest then adding a clear coat of that has a high gloss on top of this. If you want more glitter, you could do a second coat of glitter. I kind of like this thickness. So instead of doing a second coat of glitter, I'm just going to add a top coat of triple thick, which will make it shiny. Can you guys see the glitter in it? It's very faint. So if you want more glitter, just do a second coat. And you wouldn't have to be as careful. Oh, this stuff is thick. You wouldn't have to be as careful on your second coat because, well, I said that, that Posca line just bled right there. I'm just proving myself wrong in all kinds of ways today. Keep your baby wipe out. You ain't done with it yet. Don't panic, Shan. We got this. <laughs> all right. We're going to let this cure a little bit and I will add a clear coat later. So I'm just going to kind of pick up what I put a little bit of what I put down so that it's not super thick in that one spot. And I'm going to let this cure a little bit because I haven't used this triple thick brush on very much. I love the triple thick three. I love the triple thick spray, but I'm out of it. So I was going to brush it on, but it was starting to bleed right here. So I'm going to let this cure a little bit before, and I may even just go finish it with a spray sealer. Okay direct sunlight as it does but what oh you're talking about your porches okay <laughs> um debbie says could you do a second coat successfully after the first one is dry yes i believe so um no i am gonna go use a spray varnish beth because i don't want to risk uh messing this up anymore because it are it looks great i don't i've got this one little weird spot right here with too much thick glue but or varnish all right, this feels like it's been a hot mess tutorial, but hopefully you guys learned lots from my little boo-boos and mistakes, and um, it helps you guys feel like you don't have to be perfect when you paint because you don't. Um, you know, just pick up a brush and keep lots of baby wipes handy. All right, you guys, have a great afternoon. See you next time. Bye.